It's already six in the morning. This to Anne. It's a little present for her birthday. I do hope she likes it. And this is for me, Otto. Thank you, Copois. Thank you, me. I'll give them to her at home. As I told you, we will soon be going into hiding. Would you be willing to assume the risk of looking after us and being our outside contact? Yes, it will be needing you very soon. Hello, I'm home. Daddy? Daddy, it's you! <laughs> oh, you brought home lots of surprises, I'm sure. Let me see them, let me see them! <laughs> A little patience, Anne. I'll give you Meep and Copos' gifts in the meantime. Oh, yes, please. Take my case. Yes, Daddy. Thank you. Let's go inside now. Hello. Daddy, you're back at last. Thank heaven you're home safe. <laughs> How are you, Edith? Did you have a pleasant day, dear? Can I open my presents now, please, Daddy? Can I, please? Happy birthday, dearest Anne. Here, these are for you. Thank you. The one with the pretty ribbon on it is from Meep. And open your presents carefully. If not, you'll spoil this lovely paper. And the ribbon. Everything is so very precious during wartime. Yes, I know. Cinema. Oh. Oh. That's Greta Garbo. And. And Fred Astaire. Oh, I really adore them. And, my dear, you should look at the package underneath it. from your mother as well. We both have the same idea. Don't you think you should thank her too? Oh, I'm sorry. Thank you, Mummy. Take advantage of your carefree life while there's still time. Otto, I'm frightened. We were forced to leave Germany because of Hitler. 
And now they're making us wear yellow stars on our clothing in Holland. Yes, I know. The only way to escape the Nazis now is to hide from them, to disappear. What will become of us? This horrible war has me so worried for Anne and Margot. Edith, listen. You know as well as I do that it's too late and too dangerous for us to try to get out of Amsterdam. Kopois has brought supplies and furniture to our hideout. In addition, Meep is going to help us, so be brave. Mm-hmm. Friday, June 12th, 1942. You are the nicest present of all. I hope I shall be able to confide in you completely as I never have been able to do in anyone before. And I hope that you will be a great support and comfort to me. I want you to be the true friend for whom I have waited so long. And I'm going to call you Kitty. Because of the anti-Jewish degrees, Daddy can't take the tram like everyone else and has to go to his office at the other end of the city on foot. Ever since the German invasion in 1940, Amsterdam has been occupied by the army, and now we Jews must wear a yellow star on our clothing. If not, we can be arrested. My sister Margo and I have been transferred to the Jewish secondary school. Anyway, I'm so glad to be in the same class with Lise. Anne, you know, everyone is saying you're in love with Harry Goldman. We walked to school together once or twice, but that's all. Anyway, that's not what he says. (laughs) 3A minus 6AB plus 5B plus 3A plus... Since you seem to be so well informed, tell me what else he's saying about me. Guess that I'm much too young for him? No, he says he prefers you to Fanny. That she puts him to sleep. Hmm, give me that. You're jealous. Just because Harry and I are friends doesn't mean the whole world jealous? has to You're know. Joking. He's 16 and he thinks all your friends are children, but he likes you because you're his alarm clock. What? Good. Huh? <laughs> My word, Miss Frank. Uh, why this sudden enthusiasm for Alfred? <laughs> <laughs> That's enough now. Quiet down. Who would like to solve a problem at the blackboard? No volunteers? Why don't we have an expert solve it? Miss Frank? Come on, Andy. We can do it. Come on, go on. Come on, it's easy. You got it. Have you lost your enthusiasm? (laughs) (laughs) Vacation soon and no algebra. to go to the cinema again. But even that is forbidden to Jews. Just as it's forbidden to ride the trams, to use a car, to go out after eight at night, Jews must hand in their bicycles too. 
Being without a bicycle is one of the most awful things to bear if you live in Holland. In Holland, but they don't like us. You know, it's a shame. We weren't assigned to guard the beach in the sea. Yeah, that was right. That was a close call. I'll never take my bicycle out again. Lise always says I'm afraid to do anything because it may be forbidden. Just a second. I'm coming. Yes? It's a labor camp call-up notice for Margot Frank. Dear Kitty, our friends Mr. Kapoy, Smith, and her husband came to our house that same night to discuss what we should do. Margot, who is only 16, has received a call-up notice to go to a labor camp in Germany. She's very frightened because everyone knows what that means. Should we let her be doomed to this? Of course we won't let her go. Daddy has decided that all four of us will go into hiding tomorrow morning and not wait until they come to get us. I am so frightened. We're here to help you, Mrs. Frank. Edith, please. We all need to show courage. This is the color goddess. Beginning tomorrow, we're going to have to hide. Go, boys, will you still help? Of course, Otto. My bag is full. Are you ready to go, Edith? Oh, I'm terrified for the children and for ourselves, too. I'm afraid of being stopped in the street. We're giving up everything we have. Edith, follow the itinerary I gave you, and don't forget to act as naturally as possible. If you do, everything will be just fine. I assure you, you go with Margot, and we'll meet you at the hiding place, just as we'd planned. Oh. Oh. 5.30 in the morning. We're taking as much as we possibly can. No Jew in our situation would dream of going out with a suitcase full of clothing. at the North Pole. <laughs> it's time to go, girls. Are you ready? Oh. And don't forget to give the cats some milk before we go. Uh, but, Daddy, I was hoping I could take Mokja with me to the hiding place. Please, Daddy. No, Anne. I'm sorry, but it's impossible. It would be far too dangerous. We're already wearing yellow stars. We'd attract even more attention if we took him. I've left a note for the neighbors saying goodbye and asking them to look after him, so don't worry. Come now. Say goodbye to him. I understand. I'm sad, too, but we have no choice. Mokja, you'll see. I promise to come back for you very soon. Come in. 
We really must go now. Get your things. There's no time to lose. Leave Morcha there. You'll come with me, and Margot, you'll go with your mother. Now, we've a long walk, so let's hurry up. But, Daddy, where are we going? I think it's better that I don't tell you. Here, Marco. Take this. <laughs> I feel as if I'm in an adventure film. Come up, 
then. Daddy? Go ahead. Come with me. Give me your things. Margo and Mrs. Frank are already here. Don't be afraid, dear. Go on. <sighs> Daddy! <laughs> so this is the mysterious hiding place? That's right, Anne. This is it. When Margot's call-up notice came, we realized we would have to go into hiding immediately. That's why things aren't quite set up. But why didn't anyone tell me our hiding place is right upstairs from your office? We had to make sure that very few people knew about it, and we thought it too big a secret for a little girl. I'm not a little girl anymore, and I know how to keep a secret. <laughs> <laughs> This will be your room. Ah. A dining room. Mm. It's so steep. The pantry. What's in here? You can open it. Now listen to me, everyone. For as long as we're here, the most important rule is not to make a sound during office hours, not to walk around. No one must know that the Frank family is hiding in this house. Obviously, we won't be able to open the windows. We'll have to cover them so that the neighbors can't see us day or night. And you'll help me make some thick curtains, unpack the cartons, put things in the cupboards, and set up the beds and the bedding. Margot, you organize the kitchen. Yes, Daddy. Edith, you should rest. You look very tired. Does everyone understand? Let's begin. Mm-hmm. Mrs. Frank, I'll be doing the shopping every day, and I'll bring everything up just after midday, as soon as the employees leave for lunch. Oh, I don't know how to thank you. I don't know what we'd do without you, Meep. Oh, it's eight o'clock. I'd better go down to the office. I'll leave you now. The employees will be here any minute. Don't make any noise for the time being. Wait until noon or tonight to unpack all of your curtains. We're all deeply grateful to you, Meep. Let's hope that this horrible war will be over soon and that we can leave here. Hmm. Goodbye for now. <laughs> Everything will be fine, Mummy. You'll see us. Yes.
You won't believe me, Kitty, but there are even special hours for using the toilet. Hello, everyone. Hello. Well done. We can't hear a thing from downstairs. Nothing. You do realize, Copois, it's not easy to sit still for so many hours at a time. Oh, I think it's all right for you to talk, as long as you remember to keep your voices down. It would certainly make the time go by faster, wouldn't it, Anne? Well, I hope you understood what Neep just said, Anne. You should use your sister as an example. Well, I think it's about time we made this place a little more livable. Anne? Is everything all right? Mm-hmm. You're hanging up pictures of your favorite movie stars. And a picture of our Queen Wilhelmina, too. Yes. Everybody laughs at me because I'm so keen on the royal family. But I don't care. I just hope that this war is over very soon and that our beloved queen and her entire family come back from their exile in London safe and sound. Oh, Otto. How long do you think we'll have to stay here? Bells. Mm, I'm trying to sleep. Margo. I love them, especially at night, because you can count on them. What a beautiful sky. Be careful that no one sees you. <sighs> Daddy said the Van Dan family will be coming into hiding with us. I hear that their son, Peter, is very nice. Nice looking, too. <laughs> I'll never be able to sleep with those church bells ringing every 15 minutes. Look at the stars, Margot.
Kitty. I can't tell you how oppressive it is never to be able to go outdoors. Also, I'm very afraid we'll be discovered and shot. That is not exactly a pleasant prospect. We have to whisper and tread lightly during the day. Otherwise, the people in the warehouse, which is just below, might hear us. We're almost there. Welcome to our home in hiding. Hello, Mrs. Frank. Hello, Otto. Hello. Thank you so much for taking us in. You know my wife, Edith, of course. This is our eldest daughter, Margo, and Anne, who's now 13 years old. And I would like you to meet Petronella, my wife. And this is Peter, our only son. And you'll never huh? guess who's inside here. His cat, Moshi, he wouldn't leave him behind, and he has become part of the family. But you mean you brought a cat with you? Didn't anyone tell you that, that we don't want any cats? He won't be a burden to you at all. Peter will take care of him. The problem is he has to be fed. He's going to dirty things, and he could give us all away. I know how you feel, Anne, but Mushin will become your friend, too, perhaps. But for now, why don't you welcome the Van Dans? Hello. Peter, the Van Dan's son, is just 16. A kind of soft, shy, gawky boy. Can't expect much from his company. Dad, what's been happening outside since we left? And do you know what's become of my best friend, Lise Gosler? What did you say? You heard me, and I really would like an answer, Mr. Van Dan. You know, there are thousands of call-up notices, raids, and arrests on the outside. It's a madhouse. And I'm sorry, but I don't know a thing about your little friend, Lise. Why should we worry about others? We have enough problems of our own. Yes, you're right. What a nice large pile of clean sheets you've got. I would suggest that we use these first. What do you think? Hmm. I thought it would be much better if each family used its own sheets. I agree with Mummy. It would make more sense. Is that how little girls are supposed to talk to grown-ups? Is that the way you were taught to behave? First of all, I'm not a little girl, Mrs. Van Dan. And secondly, don't forget you're in our home. Well, you ought to have been in our home. We were properly brought up. It's absurd that Anne is so frightfully spoiled. I wouldn't put up with it if Anne were my daughter. Hmm. Thank heavens I'm not. Hmm. Let me see. We do use my lovely table service every day. Do you think that makes more sense? You really don't know people until after you've had a fight with them. Anyway, at least she's a good cook. <sighs> Hello, girls. Your mother and I wanted to talk to you for a minute. I can understand how you feel about the Van Dans, but if each of us doesn't give just a little, our lives in this house are going to become unbearable. You should be grateful that we're together in a safe place. The situation is difficult enough. There's no sense in making things harder. But when she insults me, I can't just say nothing at all. Try to ignore what she says. I have no problem at all with the Van Dans. Try to be more like your sister. She doesn't look for trouble. She avoids it. Respect your elders. And dear, please, I want you to show some self-control, that's all. I think a 
love our hiding as a dangerous adventure, romantic and interesting at the same time. I can't grumble all day long. I've been given a lot. A happy nature, cheerfulness, and strength. Every day I feel that I'm developing inwardly. I see how beautiful nature is. Why then should I be in despair? There you are. You're always so kind and helpful. Go on, I'll take it. Thank you. Oh, you needn't thank me. It's only natural. I'll deliver the potatoes to your office later as usual. Thank you. I have fewer and fewer ration tickets and things are more and more expensive. What's important is to keep your spirits up and never lose heart, right? One of these days, this damn wall will end. Let's hope so. Dad, goodbye. Goodbye. Heavy. I found almost everything you asked me for, but it wasn't easy. I have a few surprises for you as well. This is oh, me. thank you, me tobacco. Thank you so much. What else? Ah, and here's your movie magazine with all your favorite oh, films. Thank studies. you. I thought you might like this autumn leaf as a present. Let me see. Wait! Oh no! Now look what you've done! I'm sorry, Anne. Now for the big surprise. Huh? Take it, Mr. Frank. Go on. Oh. I wonder what it is. Oh, it's a, it's a book. Perhaps you should open it. It's a little radio. How wonderful. Now we can listen to the BBC and Radio Orange for news of the free world instead of Nazi propaganda newspapers. It's forbidden to have a radio. So, on top of clandestine Jews, clandestine money for clandestine buying on the black market, we can add a clandestine radio. As the news from the outside gets worse, the radio helps yes, to keep up our morale. This morning, English and American troops landed in Tunis, Algiers, Casablanca, and Oran. Ah, this is not the end. Well, I told you we had to remain optimistic. Of the end. Uh, but it is perhaps the end of the beginning. You have just heard the voice of Winston Churchill announcing to the free world a decisive step towards the liberation of Europe. Algiers is here. The Allies are now in control of North Africa. The next step strategically should be in the Mediterranean region. An invasion of Italy, perhaps. That's all well and good, but Italy's far from here. Yes, she's right. Not a day goes by without listening to the voice of the free world from London, which keeps our spirits up in the hope of being liberated very soon. The other good news is that Meep is going to spend the night here. You can't imagine how happy I am that you're spending the night in the secret annex with us. I am too, Anne. Look! I see 
the ribbon from my birthday present wrapping. Everyone laughed at me. They said I was doing up my hair to look like a movie star. I have lots of other colors too, so I can change whenever I feel like it. I'm glad you care about your appearance, even in hiding. It's a very good thing. I would love to enjoy myself again, ride my bicycle, breathe in real fresh air. Mm -hmm. I want to dance and travel and see the whole world. I know, and I'm sure this horrible war will be over soon, Anne. Wait, let me do that. Your hair is so soft. Do you brush it often? Mm-hmm. There. Please, I really want to know. Have my friends and their families gone into hiding too? I don't know. It's too dangerous to ask around. What's happening outside? Well... The Nazis round up Jews both day and night. They're arrested in their houses and on the street as well. They have to leave everything behind. Their possessions are confiscated. If they refuse, they're beaten or even killed immediately. They have no choice at all. You're all safe here in the secret annex, as you call it. But you've got to be very careful. Oh. Beep. Beep, I love you so much. I'm afraid they'll arrest you because of us. I'm scared. <laughs> Mr. Frank, you saved my life. Thank you. The danger is the same for eight as for seven. Consider this your home. You know my wife. Dear Edith, Kitty, great news. Daddy, We're taking in an eighth person. Nice. Mr. So Dusu, a dentist. I'm not so crazy about sharing my room with a stranger, but you got to be prepared to make sacrifices for a good cause. Anyway, they didn't give me a choice. Every morning he does what he calls exercise. Oh, and guess where he prefers spending his time? In the water closet, three, four, five times a day, 15 minutes each time, while the whole annex waits, begging him to come up. Do you think he cares? Uh-uh, not a bit. What? A cat! <laughs> I'm allergic to cats. Get that animal away from me quickly. Peter, I think you had better take Mushy upstairs right away. I'm asking you to get rid of that cat immediately. Throw him out, you hear? I don't want to see him again. Is that clear? Do you understand? Peter, you heard. What are you waiting for? Go and get rid of Mushy, I said. He's making Mr. Dussel ill. Go on. Go on now. Get that cat out of here. No, Peter, stay here. Don't listen to him. Mr. Dussel, I would like to tell you something once and for all. You've only just arrived here and you've imposed your schedule on all of us, as well as your ridiculously annoying habits. Mushi's not only a good pet, but he eats mice, which is a big help. How dare a pretentious little 13-year-old girl try to teach me a lesson. That's enough. I can't bear another minute of this. And I, Mr. Dussel... I cannot bear using the desk where I do my writing under the pretext of needing it to work on your silly so-called thesis. Get out of my sight right now. Out. And not another word. This time you've gone too far. Apologize immediately to Dr. Dussel. And don't let it happen again. Dr. Dussel, please forgive me. I got carried away. Hmm. You were really frightened, weren't you, my little scaredy cat? Uh... Look who's here, Mushy. It's Anne. 
She was brave enough to stand up to Mr. Duso. You should thank her. Let her give you a cuddle. Peter, would it be all right with you if I stayed here for a while? In your room? Why, sure. Come in. Thanks for what you did just now. I'd have never dared. Oh, it was nothing. Just because they're adults, they think they can do anything they want. You know, Anne, I really admire you. You do? Yes, you know what you want, and you're not a coward. Oh, well, who would ever be afraid of a nasty doctor? Your cat was scared, wasn't she? She? <laughs> <laughs> you're joking. Mushi's a he, not a she. Would you like to hold him? A he who's expecting kittens? Look, can't you see huh? how round her tummy is? Give him to me. Huh? You're going to see for yourself what he is. <coughs> oh, no. Mushi. Come back! Come back right now, you hear? You'll never get him out from Come under back. there. I'm going to hurt you. Come on. There, I got him. Now I'm going to show you. There, he's a male, you see? Thank you. But I have seen quite enough. Well, she is a male cat. All right, Peter, you win. <laughs> Thanks for the lesson. Leave me alone now. Anyone ever get used to any aircraft noise? It'll be all right now. She's asleep now, put her down. Sleep well. Sleep well, my little Anne. Dear Kitty, tonight is the first night of Hanukkah. The festival of light, of hope. We couldn't bring our menorah with us, so we made one of our own. Oh, but what are you doing, Mr. Frank? You're supposed to let it burn. Yes, you're right, but given the present circumstances, I think we had better economize on candles. They may come in very handy one day. 
May we all be blessed with good health until the end of this terrible war and our rapid liberation. Amen. Anne. No. Anne, stop acting silly. Take your blanket off your head. You've had the flu for almost a week now. Come on now, sit up. Ugh. Dr. Dussel wants to examine your... Oh, take the blanket off your face. No, no. And please stop acting like a baby. No, he... I don't want him to touch me. He's a dentist, not a real doctor. I studied medicine, young lady, whether you like it or not. Mm. We don't want the flu to turn into pneumonia. Leave this to me. Tom, to stop, Mommy. You won't help. Mr. Dussel's half deaf. I'll have you know I hear everything I need to hear perfectly well. Uh. Mm. She'll be all right. It's been seven months since we went into hiding in a secret annex. Terrifying things are happening outside. Resistance members are executed in the street. Machine gun fire is a hundred times more frightening than bombs. Jewish families are arrested day and night and deported. No one is able to keep out of it. The whole world is at war. There is nothing we can do but wait until the misery comes to an end. Nate's here, come! Peace in 1943. That's what we all wish. And it's my favorite cake, too. Could I have that big piece just over there? And I like that one, Meepo. Please, gentlemen, let's not forget our manners. <clears throat> <laughs> Thank you so much, Meepo. Let's hope that our wish for peace will come true this year. I don't want to alarm you, but I think you should know that it's getting harder and harder to find food. For everyone, that is. I try my luck in the more distant neighborhoods, but after waiting in line for hours, I find there's almost nothing I can buy. Oh. A few string beans, some cabbage, a handful of rotten potatoes. But what'll become it of us? It won't be easy finding you provisions. Everything's become so expensive on the black market. Meep, don't forget the risk you take. Of course our reserves of cans and dried vegetables won't last forever, but we'll just have to tighten our belts, that's all. Meep, I have an idea. Why don't you see if you can find someone who would like to buy my suit? I won't hear of it. We need the money, dear, so why not? Besides, what do I need a suit for here anyway? If we can manage to sell it, then Meep can buy food for us. All right, Mr. Van Dan. I'll try to find someone who will buy it at a good price. Meep, I don't want to take advantage of your kindness, but if you could find some tobacco for me, I would really be deeply grateful. I a brook. What a husband. Dear Kitty, at the moment, I'm going through a period of feeling depressed. My longing to talk to someone became so intense that somehow or other, I took it into my head to choose Peter. Is the radio broken? I hope you're going to be able to repair it quickly, young man. The radio might not have broken if you didn't trim the knobs all the time. Do you think you can fix it, Peter? Yes, if he promises not to touch it again. Are you insinuating that I do not know how to use a radio correctly? Leave me alone. I can't concentrate. I'm going up to the attic to work on it. Yes, go on, Peter. Change of air will do you some good. Hmm. He'd better be careful that he doesn't break it permanently.
Yes, you can hold Mushi for me. Thank you. Do you ever think about what you want to do later on when we leave here after the war? I'd like to go to the Dutch Indies and live on a plantation where it's sunny. I'm going to study art history and live in London and Paris for a while. It was just a loose wire, that's all. It'll work fine now. Let's hope we hear only good news over it. <laughs> I'm longing, so longing for everything. To talk, for freedom, for friends, to be alone. I can feel my heart beating as if it's saying, Can't you satisfy my longings at last? Be careful not to be seen by anyone outside. I am careful. I just want to breathe some fresh air. Hmm. You're right. I would gladly give up eating if I could only breathe some fresh air. And it's spring too, isn't it? the awakening of spring in me. I feel it in my body and in my soul. I think what is happening to me is so wonderful, and not only what can be seen on my body, but all that is taking place inside. Anne, would you like to talk a bit? You know, Margot, I'm a woman now. This is just my third period, but I feel that in spite of the pain, the unpleasantness, and the tiredness, I have a wonderfully sweet secret inside of me. Oh, look at the birds. I adore them. I envy their freedom. Would you let me read your diary one day? Well, yes, perhaps certain parts of it. I have the feeling that you're jealous of my seeing Peter alone, that it makes you sad. No, you're wrong. It can't be much fun being a fifth wheel. I'm used to it. Don't say that. I'm happy for you that you found a friend here. And what do you want to do in the future? Hmm. My greatest wish is to become a journalist and then later on a famous writer. I can shake off everything when I write. Everything. My sorrows disappear and my courage is reborn, you see? Yes. I would like to be a teacher or a midwife and take care of little babies. After the war, what I want to do is to publish a book that I'm going to call The Secret Annex. I only hope I'm capable of doing it. My diary will certainly be a big help. You'll do it, Anne. I'm absolutely sure of it. You're very ambitious, and you have a lot of talent. It's nice talking together like really close friends. Yes, that's what two sisters should be like. Aircraft fire and bombing. Monstrous air battles. I've forgotten what a quiet night is like. The house trembles. The bombs don't fall too far from here. Imagine, Kitty, the annex in flames and all of us having to leave. It would be a last resort since being out on the street would be just as dangerous for us as the bombings. Mommy, I only have one blouse. My sweater's too small. It barely covers my navel. 
What are you doing? I'm mending Margot's blouse for the tenth time. Can't you see that I'm a woman now? All of my undergarments are too small and worn out. I can't wear them. You shouldn't complain. Think about the horrors in the world. People dying. You should consider yourself lucky to be alive and safe. <sighs> Someone's morale, mummy. I'm sorry, but do you think my morale's high with this interminable war? You may think you're a woman now, but you're just an insolent little child. Listen, mummy. Ah, oh. I'm not a child anymore. The long months shut up in here have matured me more than you think. If you just let me be myself, I might be able to find some happiness here. It's shameful you spend so much time alone with Peter. You shouldn't go up to the attic so often to see him. It makes no sense at all to encourage him. Ugh. Find it surprising that Anna's so quiet this evening, Mother. Why can't you leave her alone for once? Well, her silence is rather surprising. She must be thinking about the next chapter of her masterpiece, or about the incomparable taste of this rotten potato. Yeah. Will you all leave her alone? God lets me live. I will achieve more than Mummy has. I will not remain insignificant. I'm going to work for mankind. You know, Kitty, it's paradise here compared to the outside. Many of our Jewish friends have been arrested by the Gestapo and then transported in cattle cars. We assume that most of them are murdered. The BBC talks about concentration camps and gassing. Oh, please, please, my friend. Oh. It's all right now. Go back to sleep. Don't worry. Go back to sleep. Happy birthday, my dear. Mm. Oh, thank you. It's so pretty, and a pair of shoes too. For your fourteenth birthday, everybody in the annex chipped in. You're growing so quickly. You really need them. Thank you.
that horrible cat. Come here, Mercy. <coughs> Come on. What a lovely young lady. You look really nice. Happy birthday. <laughs> oh, the shade of I'm not a child anymore. <laughs> Such elegance and poise. The shade of it. Thanks to you all. Again, I ask myself, would it not have been better for us if we hadn't gone into hiding? If we were all dead now and not going through all this misery? I want to go on living, even after my death. And that's why I'm grateful for this gift of being able to write and express my innermost thoughts. For tomorrow's French lesson, go over your irregular verbs. D'accord, Papa. <laughs> Winter is really severe, and our food supply has gone further and further down. Stale, dried up bread, potatoes and salad that have a sweet, rotting smell, dumplings oh, made out of no. flour that are so heavy and sticky that you feel as if they're rocks in your stomach. When you're hungry, though, you can't complain. We need money, so I've decided that we're going to sell your fur coat. What? You'll do no such thing. I love that coat, and I won't let you sell it under any circumstances. You understand? Will you stop being so selfish? You've had that old rabbit fur for almost 20 years now. We can probably sell it for 300 florins. Be selfish. I don't believe what I'm hearing. If you spent less on your horrible tobacco, we would have money to buy food. And besides, I have every intention of wearing my coat when the war is over. When the war is over? You must be dreaming. We have to survive, and we can't survive if we have nothing to eat. <laughs> I can't take it anymore. This war is so long. <laughs> the Nazis are about to win in the end. Bite your tongue! <laughs> uh, Peter! It's me, Peter. Hello, Mushi. You've been crying. My parents fight so often. If only I didn't have to be stuck with them all of the time. Oh, Peter, I know how you feel, and I'd love to help you if you wanted me to. It gnaws away at you. Even if you don't say anything, you still take all their fighting to heart. 
I'm so happy to be here together with you. So am I, Ed. I... I... We're not... We're not alone anymore. <laughs> this is the second time we've celebrated New Year's here. Me, we don't know how to thank you for the risks you've taken to help us these last 18 months. Don't thank me, and I'll continue to do my best. Until the liberation, and let's hope that's soon. Yes, the end of the war in 1944. That's right. We must never give up hope. Meep. Would you try to sell my lovely fur coat? Darling, wait. Perhaps you shouldn't sell it. No, no, I behaved very foolishly the last time we talked about it. Here, Meep, try to get 300. I turned it on. Peace at last in 1944? Yes. Psst. the noise they got frightened and ran if they suspect that there are jews hiding here they could give us away it's all because of that miserable cat how many times have i said we have got to get rid of him <gasps> i can't take it anymore Shh. somebody is opening the front door huh? hey we better check this an open door at this time of night? That's very strange. <gasps> Look at the mess in here. Burglars must have gotten into this office. That's why the front door was broken in. They must have made a fast getaway. 
Look at this. <laughs> eh, forget it. It doesn't lead anywhere. It's just a book tips. Yeah, you're right. It's late. Let's go back and find a report. That night, I really thought the Gestapo would find us and that we would all be deported. <laughs> Oh, oh. <lacht> Go, schnell! Beeil dich! Los, rauf auf den Lastwagen! Mr. Frank, I don't want to alarm everyone, but I think you should know that the man who I buy vegetables from has just been arrested. He must suspect something about us. Let's hope he doesn't say anything under questioning. Now where am I going to get food from? Be twice as careful from now on. Maybe your life is at stake, as I'm sure you realize. I'll explain the problem to the others. We'll just have to make do with less, that's all. Burying our heads in the sand has led nowhere. Mm. While Nazi Germany was rearming for war, no one in Europe mm -hmm. lifted a finger to prevent it. And now the entire world is paying for it. Ah, it's time for the news. Ah. This is London. This morning, General Eisenhower announced the landing of Allied troops in Normandy with these words. A landing was made this morning on the coast of France by troops of the Allied Expeditionary Force. This landing is part of a concerted United Nations plan for the liberation of Europe. We're going to be liberated at last, Otto! General Eisenhower continues, saying, We will accept nothing less than total victory. wasn't able to shop. And nevertheless, you're 15 today. So here is my contribution to your future career as a writer. <clears throat> and this ah. is from us. A brooch I wore when I was your age. I'm sure it will look lovely on you. There. Oh, it's really pretty. Thank you with all of my heart to both of you and to Peter. I feel so elegant and it's all thanks to you. And this gift is from your mother. And your father, of course. <laughs> the art history book you wanted so much. And some necessary undergarments. <sighs> They're nice. They're wonderful presents, and I love you very much. And I want my sister Thank you, everyone. to have this. No, no. You're crazy, Margo. No, I... I can't accept it. It's your very favorite necklace. I can't take it. <sighs> but you're my favorite oh. sister. I love you very much, Anne. And I love you, too. Mm. <clears throat> Everyone is convinced that the liberation is coming soon. 
Will this long-awaited freedom, which still seems too wonderful, too much like a fairy tale, ever come true? The best part of it is that I feel that friends are approaching. Is it because I haven't poked my nose outdoors for so long that I've grown so crazy about everything to do with nature? Watching the flowers bloom, seeing the birds, the clouds, the moon, and the stars all give me peace and keep my hopes alive. I simply can't build up my hopes on a foundation of confusion, misery, and death because I still believe that deep down people are good. I can feel the sufferings of millions, and yet, if I look up into the heavens, I think that it will all come out right. That this cruelty too will end, and that peace will return to the world once again. Hmm. Well, my friends, as soon as we're liberated, I promise to take all of you to the very best restaurant in Amsterdam. And I will never touch another bean as long as I live. <laughs> and now, let me tell you what I promise. I promise to keep smoking you out, <laughs> but with the best cigars in the world. Ah. Peter, what are you going to do? Oh, uh, me? I'm going to go and see all the fantastic films I couldn't see being here. And, of course, Anne will tell you which films you have to see. <laughs> <laughs> so wonderful to laugh and to dream. I'm going to pay a visit to every good pastry shop in the city. And I'm going to buy you a whole new wardrobe. And a new fur coat. And you, Marco. What will you do? All I can think about is a nice hot bath and staying in the tub for hours. Excellent uh -huh. ideas. Well, for one entire week, I want to be all alone. <laughs> Fine, as long as you don't forget me during that time. I understand you perfectly, Mrs. Franklin. All right, dear. I'll stay out of your way. And what about you, Anne? There are lots of things I can't wait to do. Like going back to school in September, walking freely around Amsterdam, and especially seeing my friends oh, again. You mean you don't want to go to the cinema? <laughs> Dear Kitty, things are going well. There's more and more reason to hope. Really, everything is fine. Incredible news! A general in the German army tried to kill Hitler. What a pity that Der Führer managed to escape with just a few cuts and burns. <sighs> well, what good news do we have today? It seems that the Allies are gaining ground, but slowly. Mm, that smells good. Does it? The recipe is simple. You take some canned food, some potatoes, red beans, red beans, and more red beans.
Yes, may I help you? Oberscharführer Silberbauer, where is your director, Mr. Kopois? We know you are hiding Jews here. Where are they? Aren't you ashamed to be helping Jewish trash? Meep should have been here ages ago. Yes, you're right. It's not like to be so late. <gasps> oh, wow. What is it? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> you're so silly. <gasps> Filthy Jews hiding. <gasps> they must be up there. Oh. <clears throat> oh, there they are. Don't move. There are eight of you, just as the person who betrayed you told us. Search them. They may be armed. And then search the whole place. Oh I want you all out in the street in five minutes. Do you understand? Bring me all your valuables first. Eure Wertsachen. Aus! Schnell! Steht doch Deutsch, nicht wahr? Goodbye, Kitty. I won't forget you. Promise you won't forget me. I don't want you to disappear. I'm sure Meep will protect you, if she can. Schnell, schnell, little Jew! Get inside! Quickly! You're my friend, and I know you understand my message of freedom and compassion for all the men, women, and children of the world, regardless of their race, religion, or belief. May you live in peace and help to make this a better world for all humanity.